Welcome to the studio. It's so good to have you join me again today. Today I want to go back to what we talked about the last two times that we were on. This area of Christ dwelling in us, the, the Spirit-filled life. Let me read to you again Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse of scripture really tells us what the Spirit-filled life is all about. To begin with, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, meaning that Christ died for my sins, and literally I died with Christ. The Word of God tells us that we, He took our punishment, He took our pain, He died in our place, and so we were crucified with Christ. The Bible says, though, nevertheless I live. I'm alive, I breathe, I move, I like ice cream. I live. But here's the secret, yet not I. When we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, that part of us called I, I want my own way, it's got to be my way or the highway, that part dies. And we are to reckon it to be dead, that it will not control our life anymore. But our life will be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Now, with that being true, as a Spirit-filled believer, then the Word of God says that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Here's the secret. The Apostle Paul said this was the mystery that was hidden from the ages. What was it? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what the Word of God tells us, that this was the secret to the, to the whole Christian life, was that Jesus Christ literally lives in the believer. Now, that being true, we understand this, that if Christ lives in me, then he also lives through me. And that when I find myself called upon to do any ministry at all, that Jesus wants to literally do it through me. So that when I'm asked to care for a need, that I, I don't grumble or complain. Why? Because Jesus wouldn't grumble or complain. He says, Whatsoever we do, we should do it heartily unto the Lord. Do you understand that to do that, we need supernatural power? And the Word of God clearly says it. The old King James Version quotes this verse, what I believe the, the very best. For it says, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So that I don't have faith to, in myself. I don't have enough faith to do the things that God asked me to do but with Christ living in me, then his faith is there and his faith flows through us so that I don't do it by my own faith. I remember one day my mother called me and she was desperately sick. She had bone cancer and she had bent over and a disc in her back had broken. I had just been to a meeting where I had seen amazing miracles, but I was completely drained that day. And when she said, honey, I called you to pray for me because I'm in excruciating pain, I cried out to the Lord inside. I said, Lord, I don't have any faith. Didn't mean I didn't believe in Jesus. It just I did not have faith to meet that kind of a need. And the Lord said, pray with my faith. And I realized, yes. And I said, mother, the Lord said I can pray with his faith. And so that day I prayed, Lord, in the name of Jesus, will you reach down and touch my mother's back and will you heal those bones that broke, those discs, will you heal them in Jesus' name? The next morning she called and said, honey, God touched me instantly. Before she died, she told me, those bones in my body are the only ones that I have never had any pain with. What, what are you saying? I'm saying this, that as a believer with Christ dwelling in us, we can believe for whatever Christ asks us to do. Because if Christ is in us, the life which we now live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Think on these things. Pray about it and say, Lord, reveal this truth to my heart that I might become a person of greater faith because I can live by your faith. In Jesus' name.